just like, oh, that's so cute. And look at the focus on this dog's eyes. He's like, Beep. and the person's like, oh, wow, that's incredible. How did you know what my card was? Hello. Today we're going to use an idiom. We're going to use the idiom, never mind. We're also going to use a couple of pictures. Oh, great. <laughs> we're going to combine the idiom and a picture and create conversations. Wonderful. Let's get started with the idiom. Let's make sure we understand what this idiom means. You want to use, or you use never mind when you want someone to know something is not important. Also, you use never mind when you get tired of trying to explain something to someone. Here's an example. Hey, Peter, please wash my car and bring my clothes to the laundry. Never mind, I'll do it myself. In this example, and the type of uh, intonation I had in my voice, my attitude, I would say it's the second one. I get tired of trying to explain something to someone. What I'm trying to explain is that I want Peter to wash my car and bring my clothes to the laundry. However, he may ignore me a lot. I may say it over and over again, but it never gets done. So I'm like, oh, never mind. Don't worry about it. I'll do it. <laughs> Don't need to think about it. I'll take care of it. If we wanted to make it sound more like the first part of the definition, you want someone to know something is not important, then I might say it like this. Hey, Peter, please wash my car and bring my clothes to the laundry. Never mind. I'll do it myself. And in this part, never mind. Oh, don't worry about it. It's okay. Maybe I walked in and I just... Peter was working, I didn't know he was so focused, and I just blurted out. I just said automatically, please wash my car and bring my clothes to the laundry. But then I looked up, and I saw he was really busy, so I'm like, oh, you know, never mind. It's not that important. Don't worry about it. I'll do it myself. So that's how, that's what never mind means, and that's how we would use it. Okay, let's move on. We're going to use a picture, of course. And we have the conversation part over here in the idiom. In a moment, we will make the conversation. But first, let's talk about the picture. I see two people. Let's start with the location and the environment. I would say they're on a beach. It's daytime, but it's very late in the day. I would say it's sunset. It's a beautiful sunset in the background. So we can see that the sun is setting. I'm pretty sure they're on the beach, and it looks like that's water in the background. So right up front is probably sand, the sandy part of the beach. And then out front is the water. The water looks pretty calm, uh, but it's a wonderful day, and it's a great time to be out on the beach. So we have Fred and we have Stacy, and they are jumping in the air. And they're it's like they're frozen in the air. Now, we can't see their face, we can't see what kind of clothing they're wearing, we can't see the colors, we can't really, we don't have a lot of details. However, what we do have is their silhouette. What is a silhouette? A silhouette is the outline, right? So, they are dark, right? The light is in the background, so it's coming behind them, and we can't see the details of what they look like, but we can see the outline. The outline is the outer line of their body, right? So we can see two silhouettes of two people here, Fred and Stacy. And it looks like Stacy has longer hair because it's flying up in the air. And I would say her hair is a mix between curly and wavy. Looks like Fred has straight hair. It's a little bit longer, not, not as long as Stacy's, but I would say it's straight hair. And it's bouncing up in the air because he's bouncing up in the air. We can describe their body movements, even though we can't describe their clothing and stuff. It looks like they have their feet kicked up behind them. Their knees are bent, both of them. Fred is wearing shoes. I'm not sure if he's wearing socks or not, but he's wearing shoes. Stacy is barefoot, so she has no sandals or shoes on her feet. It looks like Stacy has her hands outstretched and her fingers open. Fred has his arms outstretched, but his fingers are closed. And it looks like Fred has probably shorts on, 
I'm not sure if he has a shirt on or not, but we can see the strings on the front of his shorts that he would use to tie the shorts so they don't fall down. Stacy looks like she has a shirt and shorts as well. And if I had to describe this, I had to summarize this picture, I would say it's a beautiful sunset in the background and there are two two teenagers jumping in the air and someone took a picture of them while they were stuck in the air. And we can see the silhouettes of their body. Okay. Let's get back to the conversation, the juicy part. Let's figure out what they're talking about. Okay, so Fred's going to start the conversation. He says, how long do you think we can defy gravity and stay like this? Stacy, whoop, and he says one more thing. He says, never mind. Stacy, it's okay. I think... We can stay frozen for as long as our audience wants. Fred, I think I look like Peter Pan. Never mind. You wouldn't understand. Stacy, you're no Peter Pan. You're more of a cute, cuddly chihuahua. Okay. So let's go back through. We're going to make the idiom bold. We have one here. Looks like Fred is the one who says never mind both times. All right. Just going to take a quick check. Make sure we don't have any mistakes. We'll fix them anyway. <laughs> okay, here's the conversation at regular speed. Fred, how long do you think we can defy gravity and stay like this? Never mind. Stacy, it's okay. I think we can stay frozen for as long as our audience wants. Fred, I think I look like Peter Pan. Never mind. You wouldn't understand. Stacy, you're no Peter Pan. You're more of a cute, cuddly chihuahua. <laughs> All right. So Fred in the first part says, how long do you think we can defy gravity and stay like this? Never mind. He could have said, ah, nothing. Uh, don't worry about it. Forget what I just said. Later on, Peter also says, never mind again. He says, I think I look like Peter Pan. Never mind. You wouldn't understand. Forget it. Don't think about it. Don't worry about it. I disregard what I just said. You wouldn't understand. All right. So let's talk about some of the vocabulary in this conversation. First, we have defy. Defy, and here it's, we can defy gravity. And here defy means to go against, to do the opposite of, to use your energy and resources, power, influence, to go against something. And if we're talking about gravity, well, <laughs> gra it's very difficult to go against gravity. So they're trying to defy gravity. They're trying to go against gravity. So what is gravity? Maybe we'll take a look at some pictures that can help us understand. So I'm going to type in gravity. Gravity is the force on the earth that pulls you towards the earth, right? So if you jump up, you come down. If you throw a ball up, you throw, watch the ball and then it comes down, right? So in this picture right here, we have a drop of water, right? So first there was a drop that came down and boop, fell into the water. And the opposite reaction was that the water splashed up a bit. So this drop of water went up, and where is it going to go? It's going to go back down because of gravity. Gravity is just the force that pulls things towards the earth. And if we have like a rocket, the only way it can overcome gravity, to defy gravity, to kind of defeat gravity, is to use these powerful rocket boosters, right? And so much fuel that it causes so much propulsion. Propulsion means push, right? So it pushes the rocket uh, up into the air. 
and the spaceship goes up so it can defy gravity. All right, let's go back to the conversation. So how long do you think we can defy gravity and stay like this? In other words, how long do you think we can fight gravity <laughs> and not come back down to the earth and stay like this? When they say stay like this, they're talking about stay in the air like they are in the picture. Stacy says, it's okay. We can stay frozen for as long as our audience wants. So we'll talk about two words here, frozen and audience. If you look up frozen, the first thing that would pop up is, I'm imagining, something cold. Or like the movie Frozen, right? Where everything was cold, was cold and frozen and snow and ice and stuff like that, right? So this is frozen. These are like, it's an icicle, right? Or pieces of snow that they zoomed in on. So frozen means very cold. But it can also mean something else. And in the conversation we're talking about frozen, we're talking about staying in one place. Like, freeze! Like if the police, <laughs> they're chasing a criminal and they say, stop! Freeze! Police! They don't want him to suddenly turn into a, an icicle, a piece of ice. They want him just to stop moving. So they can watch and see what he's doing. Freeze. So when Stacy says, I think we can stay frozen for as long as our audience wants, I think we can stay in this position, not without moving. Okay, so let's look up audience. Audience is a group of people who are, let's see if it loads, here it comes. Audience is a group of people who are watching something. All right, internet is slow, <gasps> or my internet is slow. Okay, so as the picture loads, we can see people are focused on something. All of the chairs are facing that direction, and the people are facing, they're looking towards that direction. So this is the audience. I don't know what's up on stage or what's in front. Maybe it's a concert, maybe it's some sort of show, but this is the audience. You could also call them spectators. Um, except a little bit different is that spectators would be more, usually more for like a sports event, in my experience. So you have spectators to the soccer match or football match, depending on what country you are in and what you call the sport. So you could still say they're the audience, but I think it, would, it seems more comfortable to say spectators or the fans. But if you go to a concert or a movie, you could say the audience. Okay. Back to the conversation. Fred, I think I look like Peter Pan. I'm pretty sure you guys know who Peter Pan is. He's the uh, from the kids' fairy tale. Let's look him up. Peter Pan. All right, so this is Peter Pan. He's a kid. They went off to Never Never Land, and they never grow up. They never grow old, and they have fun, and... Somehow they're fighting these adult pirates, but the pirates can never win. And it's just a happy time. <laughs> okay, so this is Peter Pan. So Fred thinks he looks like Peter Pan. I might have to agree a little bit, at least by the silhouette, the outline of his body, right? Sure, he's a boy. And he doesn't have a sword or the hat, but sure, he could look, he could be Peter Pan, especially if that's what he that's what his imagination wants him to be. Then he says, never mind, you wouldn't understand. Forget it, you wouldn't understand. Stacy, you're no Peter Pan. Like, you have no resemblance to Peter Pan. There's no way I would think that you're Peter Pan. You're more of a cute, cuddly chihuahua. Hmm, so, a couple words here. Cuddly is an, an adjective and it's describing the word chihuahua. So what is a chihuahua? I'm glad you asked. Let's look it up. Ah, we have one right here. A chihuahua is a little, a little dog. It's a small kind of dog and people think it's so cute and it can maybe fit in your pocket or inside your bag or something. 
And people are like, oh, so cute, such a, a neat little dog. And it's a chihuahua. That's just the, the kind of dog, the dog breed. A breed is a kind of dog. You could have a breed of horses, a breed of cats. It's kind of weird to say a breed of people because then you're looking at them as animals. So you probably wouldn't say a breed of people. But breed of animals, breed of horses, breed of cats, something like that. Breed of birds, I suppose. Okay. Let's go back to the conversation. Uh oh, my chihuahua's gone. So, Stacy says you're not a Peter Pan, but you're more of a cute, cuddly chihuahua. Cuddly? Hmm, cuddly, I would think more of like, uh, like a teddy bear? Like a teddy bear, something that's cuddly, it's cute. It's something that you kind of want to hug. Uh, so let's look. You could say the chihuahua is cuddly. Oh, how cute. I just want to hold you. I want to squeeze you. Uh, and that's what people usually do with a teddy bear, right? So uh, this girl, she is holding her cuddly teddy bear. She's holding her cute teddy bear that she wants to squeeze and hug and hold. So cuddly is something you know that makes you feel good and nice and you want to hold it and it's like oh how cute how nice so that's cuddly all right let's go back to the conversation one more thing i wanted to mention is that fred in the beginning he says how long do you think we can defy gravity and stay like this never mind in this section he thinks what he said is not important it's not important so he just says to stacy's never mind but she says, it's okay. When she says, it's okay, she is counteracting. She's going against his saying, never mind. And she's letting him know that it's okay. It's important. We can talk about it. So if someone says, never mind, and the other person says, oh, it's okay, that means it's not inconvenient for me. It's not a problem. It's okay. We can talk about it. I can focus on what you want to focus on right now. If Fred said, never mind, and Stacy just ignored him and talked about something else, then she's probably not focused on what he is. Okay, that was conversation number one. I think we should move on. Ah, we have another picture. Let's go straight to the picture. All right, now this is a cute picture. Very cute picture. Uh, there is a little puppy and there is a little girl. Let's start with the background, the environment. The environment, I would say it's in a park. The background is blurry. Blurry means it's not clear. It's out of focus. And the little girl and the puppy, they are in focus. They're very clear. We can see the details. Behind them, I think this is a tree. It looks like green grass. And they're sitting on a blanket. And the blanket is sitting on top of the green grass. So I would say they're probably in a park. Way over here, it looks like there's probably a tree. And we have a little puppy. I'm not sure what kind of dog breed this is, but it's a cute little puppy. It's not a chihuahua. <laughs> okay, and this is the dog. His name is Milo. If I described him, I would say he has long ears. He has a cute little nose. Sometimes they'll say a cute little button nose, like a button on a coat or something. It's like, oh, you just want to touch it. It's so cute. Okay, his hair is short hair, but it's not as short as like the chihuahua. So it's a little bit longer. The ears, they hang down. Some dog breeds like a German Shepherd. Their ears, they point straight up. Maybe I'll show you what a German Shepherd is. Let's see if they have one in here. German Shepherd. There you go. This is a different kind of dog. And you can see that their ears point straight up. So, yeah, this is a different kind of dog. Okay. So this is Milo, and he's sitting right next to Eva on the blanket. And we have Eva over here, and she looks adorable. <laughs> adorable means really cute, really just neat, right? So cute, cuddly, just like, oh, that's so cute. So Eva has like a hat on, and it has a lot of frills. Frills are like these parts up here that they're not pointy, they're kind of flowing, they're waving, but they stick out a little bit. And... It's a hat that covers her head. It's like a white hat, and I'd say there's is probably a stretchy part underneath, so it would stay stuck on her head, not too tight, but just stretchy enough, like the waistband of like uh, sweatpants or something. 
and then it won't fall off if the wind blows. I would say Eva is Asian. Uh, I would say East Asian, so Japanese, Chinese, Korean, one of those. Looks like she has a cute little dress on, which matches her, her hat. And you could say this is like mesh. A mesh is where you can see through it. Let's see what they would show up in the Pixar search for mesh. Let's see if anything shows up. Uh, mesh, well, mesh, maybe we'll see mesh clothing, maybe? Hmm, this one kind of. If you unfolded this blanket and you held it up, it looks like it's thin enough and you would see see the light through it. So it's like a mesh. It's not like a full uh, cloth that you can't see through. Should we go back to the girl? The top of her little dress and the top of her hat are like mesh and they have a pattern sewn into them. But if you held them up to the light, you could see through them. She has two shoulder straps and it looks like she's smiling. She's so young that she doesn't have any teeth yet. And she's old enough to sit up, right? So I would say she's probably like, what, six, seven months old? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. But old enough to sit up, maybe not that old, maybe five, six months. Who knows? And she, she doesn't have any shoes on, so you could say she's barefoot. And uh, her dress comes down past her knees. She's sitting there next to her dog, Milo. Milo's a puppy, so he's probably just a few months old as well. And these, uh, this little girl and this dog are probably going to grow up together, right? And uh, yeah, so I think it's just it's a very cute, neat little picture. It's bright, it's cute. It could be perfect for a commercial or something. What they would advertise? Hmm, maybe like some sort of parenting video. You want your kids to have a great education from when they're small. And then they show this picture and people are like, oh, how cute. Yes, I want to buy your product. <laughs> so if I had to summarize this picture, I would say there is a little girl and a puppy sitting in a park on a blanket. And it's a bright, wonderful day out. The girl is smiling. And it looks like the dog is maybe yawning. <laughs> and someone took a picture. Cute little picture. Let's see what they're talking about. I know she's really young, but in this <laughs> situation, we're going to use our imagination and say that they can, well, Eva can talk. So Eva says, how do you like my dashing outfit? Now Milo says, rough, rough, <laughs> rough, rough. Eva says, never mind. You can't talk. Quick, fetch the ball. You can do it. Milo, rough. Eva, never mind. You haven't learned that trick yet do you want whoop, do you want to play chess Woo. all right so let's find the uh, idioms first off never mind never mind okay let me quick take a look over the conversation a little bit strange that she's talking to the well actually it's not so strange Kids talk to animals and they just have an incredible imagination. So, let's do the conversation at regular speed. Follow along. Eva, how do you like my dashing outfit? Milo, roof, roof. Eva, never mind. You can't talk. Quick, fetch the ball. You can do it. Milo, roof. Eva, never mind. You haven't learned that trick yet. Do you want to play chess? Okay. So, Eva says, Eva's the only one talking, Milo's making a noise, he's barking a little bit. So, Eva says, never mind, you can't talk. She could have said, ah, don't worry about it, never mind, don't, it's not a big problem, don't let it bother you, never mind, because you can't talk, so you can't understand what I'm saying. The second time when she says, never mind, you haven't learned that trick yet. Oh, it's not important. And what's not important? Fetch the ball, go get the ball. Okay, so let's talk about some of the vocabulary in this conversation. Dashing, woo, outfit. 
Well, outfit is just your clothing, right? So if we put outfit into, oops, outfit. Let's see what happens. It should show clothing and stuff, right? Sure, okay, so th these people have different outfits on. You see this guy is dressed for business, business casual. This lady has an outfit that's perfect for jogging and running and exercise. This guy has a, he's kind of hiding, hiding in the darkness, but his outfit would be a long sleeve shirt that's rolled up with a t-shirt underneath. This lady, her outfit is a wedding dress. Yeah, so outfits are just your kind of clothing that you wear, all right? And a dashing outfit means exciting, incredible, something that you want to look at. So if it's dashing, oh, it attracts people's attention. It's not exactly like the word ostentatious. Ostentatious, sometimes you want to attract attention to just show off. Dashing similar. Uh, ostentatious means extravagant. You want to show everybody what you can do. It's like bling, bling, yeah, look at me. So Eva has a dashing outfit. You could say it's an interesting outfit. It's an outfit that attracts your attention. You want to look at it. It's just, it's just really cute, right? And Milo says, "Ruff, ruff," kind of like he's going to talk with her. So never mind. You can't talk. Quick, fetch the ball. I'm quite sure we know what a ball is: tennis ball, basketball, football, whatever. But fetch. What do you think it means to fetch the ball? Ooh. Well, let's look it up. And this is something that dogs would do, and this is a command. She's actually telling him to do something. Fetch the ball. You can do it. So let's see what happens if we put fetch. We'll put fetch the ball in. Okay. So let's look at this picture right here. Fetch the ball is what a dog does. You throw the ball and they go and get it. So you could say fetch. Or you can say, fetch the ball, go get the ball, come on, you can do it. And look at the focus on this dog's eyes. He's like, Beep. only focus is 110% focus is this ball right here. So we had a dog when I was growing up and we would play fetch too. You throw the ball, they go get it and they bring it back. And I guess because the dog enjoys it so much, we enjoy it, <laughs> we enjoy it so much. And we have a wonderful time with our pet, with our dog. So... Fetch just means to go get it, all right? You can use it for people. You could say fetch someone at the airport, which means like pick up someone. Let's see if anything shows up for that. Uh, let's see, airport, pick up. Well, yeah, either way. If you fetch someone at the airport, you pick them up. And you might send like a taxi driver. All right, you send the taxi and then they pick him up. Like maybe we call the taxi to fetch these people, to get them, to pick them up. I don't think it's so common in the, the U.S., in, in the United States, to, f to say fetch someone. However, when I've been in Singapore, I've heard it quite a bit to go fetch someone, to go get someone, to go uh, fetch someone at the airport, pick them up. Okay, let's go back to the conversation. So she says, quick, fetch the ball. Go get the ball. You can do it. So Eva's in a great mood, and I think Milo's in a great mood. However, Milo says, roof, <laughs> with a question mark. So he's not exactly sure what she said, but he's a good sport. He's fun to be around, and he responds to her anyway. Eva also says, never mind. You haven't learned that trick yet. A trick. Hmm, what is a trick? A trick is something that you can do. Let's see if we can find a picture for a trick. And trick can be used, the word trick can be used in different scenarios. All right, so we have a few pictures that fit the word trick. Now, when I'm saying trick in this conversation uh, with the dog, it would be similar to this one, where this guy is juggling the balls. He's throwing the balls up in the air and he keeps doing it, right? And it's a little bit difficult because he's not holding the balls all in one hand. At all times, there's a ball up in the air and he's probably holding another one. And he, if he wants to keep the cycle, he has to keep throwing the ball up, catching it, throwing the ball up and catching it. So this is like a trick. A trick is something that people can do 
which other people think, oh, hey, that's kind of neat, right? So it could be a magician, it could be an acrobat, or it could be a dog trick, right? Where, like, they fetch the ball or they, they put something on their nose and then they wait, wait, and then they say, okay, go ahead, and then they eat it, or they flip on their back or something like that. So tricks, I would say, maybe this lady, she works in a circus. Uh, this is the silhouette once again. You just see the outline of her body and the, the brighter lights coming from the background. So maybe her trick is to use these long kind of ropes or long pieces of cloth, and then she spins around and stuff like that, and people are like, ooh, wow, that's cool. So that's her trick. Another way that the word trick is used is for like a card trick. So it's still something that's neat, right? So pick a card, any card, take a card, and don't, don't show me, right? Now stick it back in and I'm gonna do some crazy stuff. This is your card, right? The ace of spades. And the person's like, oh, wow, that's incredible. How did you know what my card was? Right? So that's a trick as well. Uh, there's also trick or treat in Halloween. Uh, Halloween is quite popular in America, in the United States, um, in American custom tradition. Trick or treat, if someone says trick or treat, trick or treat, uh, it has a long history, but people keep doing it. Basically, what would happen is that if you say trick or treat, it's kind of a threat in a way. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but people keep saying it in the present, even though in the past it started out as like a threat. Give me some candy, give me a treat, or I'll do a trick on you right? Maybe I'll scratch your car, I'll throw toilet paper over the trees and bushes in, in your front yard. So if you don't give me a treat or candy or something, then I'm going to do something bad to you. So it's kind of extortion. Extortion is you get people to do something because they're afraid of something you'll do if they don't do that. So for like a, a criminal, he goes into a uh, a store and he says, oh, how's your security here? And the person's like, fine, great. And he's like, oh, you know, I, we're going to offer our security services. And the store owner's like, oh, it's okay, we don't need them. And the criminal's like, no, you need them. You're going to pay us $100 or $500 every month for our security services. And the, the customer's like, but I don't need them. And the criminal might be like, okay, don't take it. And then the, the person doesn't pay and something bad happens to their store. Someone breaks in, someone steals something. Later, the criminal comes back and says, see? See what happens? It's very dangerous around here. You need to pay me. So he's extorting the business owner to pay him for his protection. And then later, nothing happens, but he, the store owner still has to pay that fee, the extortion fee. So that would be the trick, I guess. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit out of focus here. So let's go back to the conversation. So a trick in this case would be fetch the ball. And for a little puppy to fetch the ball is a pretty good trip, trick, right? If they can learn that at that such a young age, that's pretty cool. All right. So you haven't learned that trick yet. Never mind. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Do you want to play chess? Ooh. If Eva plays chess at this age, that's really good. Chess is wonderful for your brain power growing and uh, strategic thinking and trying to think, uh, anticipate what will happen. And I'm pretty sure you guys know what chess is but we'll put it into the image search anyway. So we have chess. You have all the chess pieces, the king, the pawn, uh, the rook, the bishop, the, the knight or the horse, and all these different pieces. I think chess, chess is wonderful. My daughter plays chess, and you can just see their mind working as they're trying to figure out all the you know different situations, scenarios, strategies, and stuff like that. All right, back to the conversation. Okay, I think that's it for this second conversation. So today we talked about the idiom, never mind. We used a couple of pictures, uh, two people on the beach jumping up in the air, and also a cute little adorable girl and her cute puppy sitting on a blanket in a park. And we used the idiom and these pictures to create conversations. Okay, I had a great time teaching this lesson. I hope you have a wonderful day.